This week, the issue that has become most contentious in Parliament has been the new Criminal Procedure Identification Bill, which was passed by Lok Sabha on Monday evening. The new law aims to increase conviction by taking greater identification markers and samples of those that law enforcement agencies arrest. So while before they would only take down fingerprints and foot measurements, now that data that will be collected from arrested persons will include retina scans and other biological samples, which are not very specific in the text of the bill. The opposition was united in raising its concerns at what they said was a lack of consultation with stakeholders before the bill was brought in. They also point out that in light of Supreme Court judgment declaring privacy to be a fundamental right, this new law will be a violation of that privacy, especially as one of the clauses in the bill says that once the data is collected, it will stay in the system for 75 years. Home Minister Amit Shah said that this bill was overdue and was necessary for modern day crime fighting. He also said that concerns about human rights violations were unnecessary. So who's right, the government or the opposition? To understand the nuances of this bill on, on the record today is our guest. Uh, he's a former police officer and he's also served as the director for the National Police Academy, VN Rai. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on the record for Hindustan Times. I want to start by asking you, you must have seen the text of this bill. Do you welcome it? No, do you welcome UAPA? Do you, do you welcome Pegasus? If you welcome all those uh, procedures and protocols, those also have been introduced. Uh, actually, at least the UAPA is a proper act. And uh, the amendment about two years back, when they introduced the amendment, it said instead of an organization, unlawful organization, it can be slapped on an individual also. Now, that was the red herring. The opposition should have known what is coming to them and what is coming to the society. And now we all know how grossly it is being misused. So who can welcome this? No, you can't welcome this. Any arbitrary authority, increase in arbitrary authority, increase in mischievous judgments uh, or discretions of executive authority should not be welcomed in a democratic society at all. It's interesting you say that, <laughs> sir, because you know we had uh, certain police officers, for instance, very well-known uh, police officer from Maharashtra, Miran Borvankar, who has been critical of the various policies, she actually welcomed it. She said that, you know, it really helps to have all this data that will be collected. We need it for crime fighting. Uh, so where do your concerns emerge from? No, no, you tell me or give me example of one particular society where the crime has been fought on the basis of these data. These are not tools for preventing crimes. For fighting crime, you have to prevent crime. These are tools which can be used at the later stage during the investigation, at the most. And there is no research which says that it has helped in gaining more convictions. Where are those researches? Those researches have never been discussed, never been consulted, never been circulated, etc. And do they match? our the, the conditions of Indian society or don't they match all these things? We are talking about America. Now, America is not an ideal society as far as the crime control is concerned, admitted you. Number two, America has a bipartisan politics also. In greater share, you will find that both the groups combine together when it comes to actually safeguarding their national interests. Whereas what is in India? There is no partisan politics, not at all. And the powers that have been, uh, I would say, handed over to the executive, those powers have been grossly misused. It is not simply misused. You take the case, now police high-handedness, when I joined this service, it was there. He used to pressurize people for arranging their surrender to the police if they were wanted. 
if there is funding, all kind of measures were taken. But there, was, there still was, you'll say, say, some human limits or other limits were there, self-imposed limits or departmental limits, administrative limits. But now we have reached to a stage of bulldozers standing in front of the, in front of your eyes and coming in your dreams to arrange your surrenders. And these things and encounters, false encounters are being arranged. And these things are being actually, what should I say, not only practiced, but being displayed as a means of bringing in good law and order in the society and being accepted by a section of the society. And these are going on. So I would say that there is no research, well-founded research, which says that it will help in conviction. Though no, convictions are not based on your data. Convictions are based on matching. You have to match one sample with the other and then you are in get conviction. It is not that you have a larger data in your storage, so your conviction follow. It doesn't happen like that. I, I think one of the example of this, sir, that was given in uh, Parliament when I listened to the debate was that they said that look at the fact that, you know, since we started collecting data uh, and matching it with stolen cars, lots of people, when they go to sell the stolen car, they get caught. This was given an example of how NCRB collecting more data uh, was helping. Uh, so you don't, you're not convinced by that. If the market of stolen cars has fallen now, or is anybody claiming that? People are not stealing cars. I, I, I have a feeling that the market has gone up. The cars are being stolen on the basis of customized orders. We let somebody get up and give us the data and claim that the market of stolen cars has fallen down, and then I will fall in line. But there is no such thing has happened. And it will never happen. It never happens. It never works that way. So you are, you know, you've been a teacher to uh, uh, police academy recruits and you train them on ideal and model laws. You're, perhaps that would explain why you are an idealist that way. Uh, can you tell us, so I want to go a little clause by clause because if anyone listened to the debate and for a lay person or even a journalist like me, it's a complicated law. And I want you to help us understand how, when it is implemented, what could go wrong as you uh, foresee. So, for example, okay. when the clause which describes the kind of measurements that they were taking. Now, in that, they not only say retina scan, as I mentioned, but also these other biological samples. Uh, and that could be blood samples, perhaps semen samples. And they say, so do you find that the definition of what kind of samples they take or the specifics that they've given in the law and clauses, do you feel that it is very clear or do you feel that it is open to misunderstanding? No, it is open to misuse, let me tell you. If I give you a sample, the sample will appear, I go, God knows where or which all places. Why I'm saying is that I have been a trainer, but people think that the training is completed in the training academy. It does not happen that way. People are already trained in their various social values when they come to us for training. Then they're trained in the academies. And when they go to the field, that is their mother trainer. The conditions which they find, they come across in the field, the way they work there, the way they are given the various notions and various ways of working out the cases, that is their best trainer. Best trainer in the sense ki that actually conditions them very, very firmly. So if you are looking in terms of convictions, in terms of catching criminals, only in terms of statistics, what will happen? You will always have a tendency to plant evidence. And in India, where the arrest, a simple arrest becomes a very highlighted event. If the arrest is of a celebrity, or if it is a political adversary, or if it is somebody who actually where is a sensational case, so arrest becomes a very highlighted incident. So what do you think? 
when the arrest is so much highlighted, what will happen with the all the sample that has been taken by you? Because this sample taking is still permitted. All those samples can be taken, but for they can be taken for matching. You can still take biological samples. That is not a problem. For matching, you can always go to the magistrate and request that I, I want biological sample. The people who are caught for rape, are they not giving their biological sample? They are giving the biological sample. They are being examined. Everything is being done. They, if somebody refuses to give biological sample, then it goes against that person. It is evidence against that person. It is a very material evidence. So, where is the requirement of uh, putting everybody in a queue? And here you are not, you are just merely because you are arresting a person, you can arrest anybody. That yes. is the most yes. discretion of police in the, today's India. And that has not been sorted out neither by the executive nor by the judiciary. That is not being sorted out. So, so long as arrest remains such a massive manipulated discretion of the police, if you start indulging in collection of various samples also, you arrest anybody. And now this uh, amended thing says that any arrest, in any arrest or so, any execution, yes, please. So the question I want to ask you, because this, this, this confusion is there in many people's mind is, can someone say no to giving their measurements? Because in some place it says shall be obliged not to give, but in other places it says that if you refuse to give your sample, then they can move against you for obstructing uh, a police work. So, sir, what is your understanding after reading the thing? Can, can one say no? And under what circumstances can they say no? No, if you say no, it is it itself has been made a substantive offence. So, you attract that offence. So, if you say no, that is a violation of the law. That becomes violation of the law. That is an offence now. So you can't say no. Even if you, <laughs> this sample does not matter after it's, after some time, it is merely done for publicity's sake, but the refusal to give sample will become a substantive offense. One of the things that is pointed out as a concern by many people who have studied it, and we heard from various opposition leaders as well, uh, is the fact that they felt this was an invasion of privacy. Then, of course, the concerns about how the data will be stored, whether it can be, it will be safe enough, because, of course, we keep hearing of various uh, security breaches. Um, the, when the Home Minister spoke after this, he said that there has to be a balance between the privacy requirements and someone's own rights or human rights and that of the collective need of society. Uh, what do you feel about this whole privacy argument that is being used over here? Well, let me tell you very clearly one thing, that the policeman is trained to be many things, including very, very, all the technology should be placed at their disposal. All the infrastructure should be placed at their disposal. They should be helped in this and that. Everything is actually done and which should be done. But one thing where we lack and when we train and when we pass out the policeman, and that not only is true uh, of a policeman, but also of a prosecutor and of a judicial officer, we don't make them constitutionally conditioned. And without a constitutionally conditioned mind, when you are giving all these powers, then what happens? You have technology in your hand, you have authority in your pocket, and then with the combination of the two without a constitutionally conditioned mind, it creates havoc. And actually, it is not just a, an intrusion of TVC. It is intrusion of politics everywhere in our lives. Whatever suits to the politician power, the policeman, the police agency, some agency will be there to carry out those things. And these will, be the, these will become the tools in their hands. That is what, how it is going to happen. Are you especially worried or would it be easier if the person, the law says, the proposed law says that uh, someone of head constable uh, or station in charge, is that too junior? No, no, you make the police commissioner as the person in whose presence it should be taken. It would not matter, let me tell you. The culture is the same. <laughs> it does not matter. What we should understand is a very simple thing that 
these things, these provisions are unnecessary. Just one word. They are not required. They are not helping you in any way except the political masters. It is increasing the arbitrary authority of the or the mischief potential of the police agencies. Except this, it is not helping to anybody, neither to the crime control scenario nor to the conviction scenario, nothing. Crime control is based on preventive measures. There is no prevention here. Conviction is based on matching the samples, which is available even today. Explain to us, sir, suppose we're a complete lay person, we don't know the ways of the police. Paint us a scenario of what kind of mischief could happen. It's a very simple thing. If you arrest a person, force that person to give all these specimens. You name one specimen, I will tell you the mischief, the matching mischief. Suppose so say the retina plant. Pardon? The eye scans. Eye scan. Why do you need eye scan? And where? What? What can you do with the eye scan? The problem is that whatever identification mark you take, what is the guarantee that it will not be planted somewhere? Where is the guarantee? We, it is very easy to say that it uh, you can be caught, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let me tell you, the planting of false evidence is going on in the police department even today, without this act. But that is being done at a much lower scale because they do, are not armed with these powers. That planting will go 100 times more. That's all. That is what I'm saying. The, so, sir, are you suggesting that even biological samples that are taken can be planted by the police if they so not? intend to, if there is mischief in their mind several years later? Why not? Why not? It can be planted. You leave a sample, it can be planted. When you can breach computers, when you can plant cyber evidence, you can plant these, these physical evidence also. Where is the problem? So that really does paint a very worrying picture. That is very frightening. That is very, yeah. you know, just, I see, that's why in the beginning I said you just go back to the debate on UAPA. When the same Home Minister was introducing the amendment to UAPA, where they were saying, instead of proving that you belong to an unlawful organization to attract UAPA, UK, the provisions can be attracted even against an individual. You don't have to be part of an unlawful organization. Unlawful organization was a complicated thing. You first prove that there is an organization, then you prove it is an unlawful organization, and then you prove I am a member of that organization, then you attract a UAP. Now anybody can be attracted to UAP. A Kafi Lamid can be attracted to UAP. A so and so can be attracted to UAP. You catch hold of me and put me because I gave an interview and you put a UAP on me. And then the court will say, all right, these two gentlemen or this lady should not be set out on bail because the UAP is there, because it can be attracted against an individual. Now, do the legislatures, do the MPs, do they understand these intricacies? How many MPs understand? They don't understand. They have been given a bill. It is in national interest. They have been told it is in national interest. It looks very simple thing that, all right, Earlier also you are giving identification thing, now also you are being given array. All these things are already available with the EU, the government. You see the Aadhaar card is there. All kind of uh, things are there. All these things are already available with the government. Population registers are there. Everything is there. What is not there? So why are you insisting on all these things, handing it over to the, on a platter to the investigating agencies? Well, first of all, you finish that plantation culture from the police department. First of all, you make them constitutionally conditioned. I challenge you to take out 10 police officers who think constitutionally. Give them a point and let them give a constitutional response. It will be very difficult to find them out. So, sir, if it indeed is so worrying, is there any body that does any kind of checks because obviously the government has the numbers this bill looks like it is going to become law 
Is there any hope for any checks and balance over here? Anyone keeping an eye on police forces and hoping that the enforcement agencies don't misuse it like how you fear they will? No, that is the job of the judiciary. Unfortunately, judiciary is failing in their day-to-day -day functioning. The job of the magistrate is when a person is brought to, arrested person is brought, arrestee is brought before the magistrate, the magistrate has to satisfy himself or herself that a case is made out against the person, foundable offense, that the arrest has been done legally, that the fellow has not been tortured, that the remand is being given on lawful grounds. But none of them is being done. Every day it is happening. It is happening with thousands of people. Every day it is happening. So judiciary is failing. It is agency is there. Checks and balances are there. Those checks and balances are there in the constitution. Those checks and balances, when the executive is overstepping too much, then checks and balances should have been there. Why bulldozers? The judiciary can't see the bulldozers in in the public. What what those bulldozers are doing? What the court should have been doing? Why the bulldozers are doing it? And why are they being permitted to do it? So that agency is there. Now suppose you make a oversight agency. There is a suggestion that you make an oversight agency or a or agency which can actually supervise all these things. Now that agency will also be made by whom? That is a part of the executive only. It is not that it, it becomes part of some other uh, this thing or that thing. It is part of the executive, the same executive. One of the things that uh, we heard uh, in Parliament from the government side was that they assure that the way the rules will be written to this law, that it won't be misused because they point out saying that someone brought up the concern that, you know, if they are protesting, even then their uh, measurements will be taken of various political leaders because that's what political agitation and movement is about. Uh, do, you, do you have hope that the rules will perhaps be more sobering? No, rules, even the act also looks very sobering. It does not, on its own, it does not say that I am going to be a very draconian kind of a, this thing. So rules can be made. The, the thing is how the rules are applied and who is going to apply the rules. That's what I'm saying. Everything is written, already written. So without making the rule, they can't apply the act. Act itself will not come into picture unless they make the rules. So they will have to make some rules. Those rules will be made. Some safeguards will also be provided there. If you ask me, I will request you introduce one safeguard, only one safeguard. That a police officer, a agency caught indulging in mismanipulating the evidence should get same punishment for which the manipulation was done. If you make just one line rule, and follow it and give you a time limit that within this time limit you have to finish it, the whole thing. When so many arrests are being made, illegal arrests are being made, arrests are being made where the grounds are not there, there are judgments of the judgments from the Supreme Court which say that arrests have to be made only when they are justified. And in spite of that, it is being done and every you identification, you are talking about identification. The whole world saw what happened, how the accused, those accused have not been identified in, in the Unnau case. Where on agitating farmers, the car was brought and uh, they, they were mowed down. Some of them got killed also. It happened right on the screen. Everybody saw it. The whole nation saw it. But we have not been able to identify. So when you can't identify something which is happening right in front of your eyes, will you identify something in accordance with the law? The thing is, identification is a must. Matching is a must. Sampling is a must. Those things are part of the legal protocols. The thing is that whether you are doing it and whether... And why can't you have a bipartisan kind of a law? Why don't you have more discussion on this? Let it be thrown to the, given to the various retired uh, judicial officers, retired police officers, retired administrative officers, 
to journalists, to all those sections of the people who are actually involved in this, sociologists, psychologists, let there be a bigger debate. And after that debate, you bring them in. And then you say, all right, we all agree on this. My final question, and which you know, they always point out and say, look, it's been the last time this uh, version, existing version of this law is more than 100 years old, 1920. Um, so obviously, they say it needed to be updated. So if you would have been drafting a new law, which is, you know, in, in tune with the times, and it took care of all the kind of modern day crime challenges, what would you have put in, sir? Yes, if I have to amend this, yes, it is 100 year old, it should be changed. It should be thrown in the dustbin, number one. Number two, you have data in your storage by way of Aadhaar card, by way of other means that you have collected the data. They give access to the police agencies. Let the police agencies file affidavit, say that this data is required by me in respect of this particular person. And please hand it over to me. I am responsible for its proper storage and usage. That data should be given to them. This amendment is enough. As far as other samples are required, which are not available in the Aadhaar card and all those things, you still have provisions to go for those samples. You still can request the court. The court will order and samples will be given, whether it is biological samples or it is physical samples or it is biometric samples, whatever samples you require, you can still get it once you have the man in your hand. So there is no problem. This bill, which is 100 year old, should be thrown in the dustbin. The new bill should also be thrown in the dustbin. Unnecessary. Mr. B. N. Rai, thank you so much for being so forthright and for sharing your ideas and your opinion on this contentious bill, which looks set to be passed by parliament very soon. Thank you for speaking with us, sir. Thank you very much.